of England for organizing the Live Aid concert. He writes all about it in his autobiography. This entitled, Is That It? Please welcome Sir Bob Geldor. <laughs> Sir Bob, do you, do, you, do you like the sound of that? Um, it's all right. I mean, you can, you can, you should be actually lying prostrate on the floor and <laughs> talking to me muffled from the carpet, you know. But uh, I don't mind. You can call me that if you like, Will William. <laughs> Sir William. Yes. Uh, no. Uh, so now tell me, what what, what happens when you're knighted? Uh, what was the experience like? Oh, um, they caught. Well, I was in L.A. and then the British consul came along and said, um, Her Majesty, on behalf of the government, would like to um, award you. Um, Knight Commander of the most excellent order of the British Empire. I said, well, thanks very much. And, um, <laughs> I got a lunch. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, I'm Irish, so I have to get the permission of uh, my government to get it. And they said, well, we I rang them, and they said it was okay. So I rang them, and uh, they said, of course, go ahead and get it. She'll grab it now, quick. <laughs> and, uh, so I said, fine. And what you do is you go along and you wear a top hat and tails and that stuff, and you're allowed to bring two members of your family and you're not allowed to take pictures, and you go in, and um, there was about a dozen of us being made knights, and they're usually quite old people, about 65, 75, and they're old diplomats and that, and they were seriously nervous, you know, they were sweating hands and rubbing it on their coats and all that, and they were practicing their kneeling on the, on the thing, you know, went ready for the sword, and all this, and it's this army guy walking up and down, he says, now, Her Majesty will tell you to approach, and you'll approach and you'll kneel down, so they were all practicing away, and then you hear a band start, and you file in, in single file into the throne room, which is a big ballroom in Buckingham Palace, very beautiful, and the Queen's there in her frock, she hasn't got her gear on, you know, and, um, um, she, has, she's, she hasn't got her gear on? No, she, so she hasn't. She's gearless at she's this point. Actually, huh? She had her dominatrix outfit on, but she would hide it. She's standing there with two um, aides, two, you know, those horse guards, parades guys, you know, they were there. And um, you go forward, and um, she, you bow like that, and she puts over your neck a ribbon with a cross, which is the order, which is the order of the British Empire. And then on your breast pocket, she puts this big sunburst, which is the rank, which is Knight Commander, and then she says a few words to you. And um, you walk backwards, bow, and out the other door, and, and that's it. That's it? No, I, they don't give you, like, an ID card or a, a knighthood club membership? Card no, I, I was looking for my name on the medal, you know, but I said, have I got the right one? Is this, is this my one? Yeah. Well, congratulations on the book. It's very interesting reading. Uh, it, I like the title, Is That It? Mm. Is it I guess there's a a story behind how you chose that as a title? There was, because I was getting towards the end and I was sort of, you know, had all these literary phrases that I was going to use and all that, but as I got towards the end, I just didn't think they'd do, and... Um, what were some of the other choices you were thinking about? I'm not going to tell you, because they're too <laughs> embarrassing. But, um, uh, I was at a part where I remembered Bill Graham, who was the um, American rock promoter, who's promoted practically everything since the 60s, and he was doing the Philadelphia end of the concert, and it was after the last act had gone off and the stadium in Philadelphia was emptying and there was still a bunch of kids hanging around the front with a couple of cans of beer, finishing them off, and Bill walked out on stage and looked around and thought, bloody hell, we did it, you know? And he was there, like, thinking how wonderful he was, and <laughs> these kids said, hey, you, Bill Graham! <laughs> and Bill went, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and the kid looks up and said, is that it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the closing act. Yeah. So now tell me about the live. It's, a, it's the world's largest uh, global fundraiser. What, what it's did the world's you, everything. Grandest. Uh, uh, you assembled. Can't describe it. Uh, yeah. Assembled an enormous cast. There were 72 of bands. Yeah. Um, it started in Sydney, and then we moved into London, and then Philadelphia and London together, and. Um, it was, uh, I mean, there are interesting things, which I'd actually forgotten. For example, we had the stage was um, circular, obviously, but it was divided in three. And the band that was playing to the public uh, was on stage A. Stage B, the band who had just played, was coming off. And stage C, another band was going on. 
and, and this was critical because it was on TV, you know. And kind all of a the big lazy Susan of music. That's right, you know? and all the <laughs> all the performers had a, a light in front of them, red, orange, green. And when that light hit orange, you better finish your song quick because if you didn't, the button was pressed and you were, you know, I can't get no. <laughs> And, and, and that was it. And uh, I was really afraid that um, the electrics would break down. So I insisted that there, there was a horse underneath the stage, you know, to pull it around uh. in, in case the electrics broke down. And this poor horse um, stood there all day munching his hay, waiting to be pressed into action. <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily, Dobbin wasn't needed on that particular day. He said, no more music. Yeah, please. <laughs> So now, you describe the feeling in the book of standing up on, on stage in front of what was what? Uh, how many people do you feel were watching? There was two billion. Two billion. Uh, we, get, we get like half of that on this show. <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there. We get more. Two. <laughs> so now, what's that feeling? In the book, you, can, maybe, can you uh, re-describe that moment? You're out there, and, and what are you thinking? Oh, well, it was, um, it was very difficult because, for me, the whole thing was this very practical, pragmatic exercise. And I was sort of involved with all this organizational stuff going on. And I mean, um, to give you an example, I mean, people talk about, hey, what did Mick say? And <laughs> what did David say? And, you know, what did Bono say to you? And, you know, and all that. And actually, I wasn't thinking about any of that stuff. I mean, the last phone call I made before I went to bed, the day before Live Aid, was to the, the Norwegian Postmaster General. And I was asking him, were his locked box systems intact? And um, that's the sort of thing that they have to have, apparently, for receiving money from people. And I'd been on the phone to an island called New Caledonia, which is a speck in the middle of the Pacific. And they had something like four telephones in New Caledonia. I'd been on to the, the governor of the banks there. And it was very boring things like that, really, most of the time. And um, so that was what was going on in my mind. And I woke up in the morning, and I hadn't had much sleep because I was worried. And I went out of my house, and it was a very hot day in London and all the windows were open, and every television set on that road, I could hear it, and it was three hours to go to live, and so on, so I said, oh, God, yeah. And I had no contracts with anybody, and I was very frightened that nobody would actually show up, and I didn't know that the planet could handle 15 hours of the Boomtown Rats, which was my plan. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna I, do that, we're gonna do another one, we're gonna do that set again for you. We're gonna do I, it six or seven more times, till yeah. somebody shows. I was ready for it, I could see potential album sales in this, you know, but, uh, um, so I got to the stadium and Charles and Diana showed up and like all oh, this was going on, hello, you know, and all this, and then it started and I had to get on stage, you know, so this was all going through my mind. And then it said, uh, Joe, and ladies and gentlemen, the Boon Ten Rats, and I walked out on stage and poof, the enormity of the thing just smacked me in the face. And it wasn't just the 80,000 people, but it was a very um, tangible air of emotion. I mean, it was not like any other gig I've ever played. And that moment, I mean, there's a picture of me taking off my jacket, and I turned around to the piano player, and I went, bloody hell, you know, and I was terrified. And I started a song, which was maybe our most famous song at that point, called I Don't Like Mondays. And um, there was a line in the song, the lesson today is how to die. And as I was singing it, I suddenly realized what I was singing, and I just stopped dead. And I looked around the stadium, and at that specific moment, and it was a very brief moment, but at that specific moment, you must be aware that everyone I'd ever met in my entire life was watching. 50% um, of the total population of the world was watching. And you could literally feel somebody in China and Siberia and India and Canada and America and South America and Europe and Africa and Micronesia you could absolutely feel them experiencing that exact thing at that moment and listening and watching the same thing as everybody else on the, on the planet. And you felt very much, at least I did, in touch with something that was very powerful and seemed to exist forever underneath all the superficial differences we have. And um, it was a unique moment just to stand there and one that I will remember forever. And um, I just closed my hand and let the song go on. But, I mean, at that point, it was absolutely the high point of my life. Yeah, it's very moving the way you describe it in the book. How much, how much, how much money have, have you, how much money did that raise? Um, depending on the fluctuation exchange rate, between about 130 and 150 million dollars. That's terrific. Mm, That's it's terrific. good. You, you didn't that.